Coming to you live from the frozen wastes of the Scythantrum Downs. Do they have those? I don't know. It's this week's not. Apocalypse. <laughs> I am your co-host, Kevin Lennon. With me, as always, probably, is John Ferris. John, how are you doing today? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine as well. I'm very curious about the... Uh, the alien remains that we found earlier yeah um that i had them in a nice secure location we find the a crash spaceship of course yeah um, there's, there's loads loads uh, of them in the antrum it's, downs the, it's littered with the things which may or may not exist yeah it's sort of more of a, an environmental kind of action that we're taking sort of a you know keep the area clean kind of thing or you go around and you pick up all the bits of space debris that have fallen down <laughs> and you put them in the recycling yeah this is definitely um, not community service that we're doing no 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 but the thing is and like yeah every now and then you come across something cool and you're like i'm keeping that you know mm -hmm. and of course we came across the twisted remains of some kind of outer space creature and i was like that's gotta be worth something yeah so we put it in the the sort of the the closet corner of our shed here and then i went to check it about 20 minutes ago and it's not there anymore so uh oh where did it go because the door's still locked it didn't leave you know so what 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 what, what, what is going on john well i'm looking at you right now and well, you're looking at me <laughs> yeah yeah Something's not right here. Mm -mm. Well, no. normally yes. you're the one who's, you know, is is prepared for these things and yes. has three movies that might get us out of a particular, very, very particular situation that we end up in. But I kind of beat you to the punch this time. That's a bit strange. Yep. That's very um, unusual. Mm. Un out of character. <laughs> Although I also don't have... Any yeah, films which on is me? out of character. Which is very out of... Yes. So we're back to square one. Hmm. Mm. What came first? The not bringing the DVDs or... The... Bringing the DVDs? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well. Well. As I have learned from, from doing this podcast with you for literally a year now. Literally a whole year. A whole yes. year. A whole year. Is you bring three movies, then uh -huh. we watch them in order... Yes, and, and then, and then we we would come up with a solution to our problem, and then so, we learn, and then I didn't. I, this is kind of great. I didn't have to cart anything around or do any of the work this yeah. week, John. Dazzle me. What and have you, always, you got? Yeah, well, and it's it's very easy. I don't know why you make a big deal of it. Okay. So <laughs> this oh. week we have John Carpenter's The Thing from oh, 1982. Brilliant. Cool. And next we yep. have the. Thing, um, uh, what? John Carpenter's the thing from 1982. We might only need two this time. Okay, well, what's the um, other one you've brought then? The other one I've brought is the thing from 1982. <laughs> okay, I see what's happened right. here. <laughs> yeah. So. Shit. So our deviation from the formula mm. has led to. Would you say? I mean, of of three, you know, ones on VHS, ones okay. on Betamax, and ones on DVD. Oh, okay. is does that count? Did you get like a a Blu-ray or a no? What's a Blu-ray? Uh, it's this laser beam. There's a blue beam that you shoot into your eyes, and that you and you, <laughs> you you see the movie. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that sounds dangerous. Yeah. Oh, right. You know what? It probably is. So, how about then? Well, we'll just go with it, because to be honest, John, this is a hames. Yeah. Let's sit <laughs> down and watch this, these mo- You've thrown me off now, I can't say the thing. <laughs> Let's sit down and watch these movie. Okay, John. Well, here we are. Yeah. We here watched we are. all three of those movie. Yeah. Well, technically, actually, if you want to get down to it, there are technically three The Thing movies. Oh, God, uh, here we go. That you could have brought. I could have bothered. Brought <laughs> yeah. So, yes, we are primarily concerned here, of course, with John Carpenter's The Thing from 1982. Yes. Which, 
uh, should surprise no one who's ever listened to any <laughs> single episode of this. Yes, uh, anyone anyone that. new to this podcast, if you just tune in that, that rambly start, you're probably going, what the fuck are these guys <laughs> on about? Yeah. But John Carpenter's kind of a big deal around here. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of a, you know, he's 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 got a lot of pull, yeah. as, as they may we've say. We've even, like, to the point that we've made a jingle about him because Kevin <laughs> mentioned him so much in, in uh, when we were looking at other movies. <laughs> John Carpenter. But yeah. one movie in particular always seems to come up, and it's yes. one that I mean, I, I love this movie, but it's particularly close, close to Kevin's heart. I would, I, I, yeah, th- I think I can say that. So creepy. Kevin, what did what? What do you think of the thing? I think the thing is the best movie I've ever seen, <laughs> probably. Now, yes, there's a back and forth and discussion to be had about that, about what that really means. Which I guess is really the point of why we're doing this today. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not. I've I've never claimed that it was like the perfect movie. No. I just really, 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 really like it, and I think it does, it does, almost everything very, 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 very well. Yes. Oh, so of course, anyone who hasn't seen the thing, well, you probably shouldn't listen to this because yeah, you should go watch the thing. This is going to be spoiler heavy. Yeah, like you can't like because. Uh, the basic premise, of course, is based on John W. Campbell's short story, Who Goes There? Just which a is great title. also a great title, <laughs> yeah. yes. Have you have uh, you read the, the, the book? Oh, yeah. Yeah? No, it's, yeah. it's a novella, actually, isn't it? There's, it's, it's a novella. It's a short... It's, uh, it's, it's hard to find the dividing line between a novella and a short story. Yeah. It comes down to, like, word count, which <laughs> oh, uh, is just silly. Uh, he apparently did write a sort of first draft of a full novel about it Mm -hmm. that is available. I still haven't gotten and read it. Right. It wasn't discovered until like, like relatively recently. Okay. Uh, The last few years it was discovered and I think published. Uh, So there is a proper book. Uh, I don't know if it's, but it was not finished. I don't like that. I don't like it when somebody like digs something out of a writer's back catalog that they never published. Yeah. And, that, that's uh, why, like, and yeah, that Terry Pratchett thing, the, the Terry Pratchett, Pratchett thing, yeah, where <laughs> he, he got his uh, his aid or his like, uh, what would you call? It his, was his assistant, his guy, assistant, buddy. yeah, like yeah. He, he got him to like run over his hard drives with a steamroller. <laughs> yeah, the guy, poor bastard, <laughs> had to go and source a steamroller. I think that guy does pretty well, like him <laughs> yeah. and Terry Pratchett's daughter, like in charge of that whole the estate, the estate, as it were. which yeah. um, hopefully they do well. And, yeah, I, I wish them all the best because they seem yeah, pretty indeed. pretty cool. Yeah. And they seem I respect to have the best Rihanna Pratchett, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's wonderful. So I don't like it, like because uh, some years ago it happened with uh, Harper Lee. Uh, she mm-hmm. was still alive at the time, I think, but she was like mentally incapacitated. Uh, yeah. And her sister, I think, chose to publish this draft of a novel she wrote that was a sort of a prequel to To Kill a Mockingbird yeah. that she never wanted published. And it wasn't a great book, and also it did a lot to sort of tarnish the character, a character in To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah. Atticus Finch, and that was a bit bad, so whatever. You know, that's that's not good, uh, so I don't know about that, which is one of the reasons why I haven't read the proper novel version. Yeah. Uh, but it is, there was a film originally, back in the day, called uh, The Thing from Outer Space, Yeah. that was the first adaptation of this. Uh, which was something of an influence on John Carpenter's version. But... Yeah, he seems to really like it. In fact, he was yeah. disappointed that the director of that w- had some negative comments about yeah. the thing when when his one was released, That's as a true. lot of silly critics did. We'll get to that mm. later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, hindsight is twenty twenty, isn't it, John? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to save it for later, but I, I mm. took some quotes from these uh reviewers and i just want to pick them apart because okay. to me they f- it feels like they completely missed the point but <laughs> yeah. i, I kind of want to save that for later we'll talk yeah. about the movie a bit more um yeah but so the thing from outer space it was see the thing about the the short <clears throat> the story the original story is that yes it's set of course the basic premise is of course a bunch of guys at a an antarctic research station yeah come across the frozen remains 
of a frozen spaceman or something. <laughs> yes. A weird... And the way it's described in the book is very much like if you've ever read any H.P. Lovecraft stuff, John W. Campbell actually ran the magazine that Lovecraft published in. Oh. Okay. Uh, they knew each other. Um, and so this is very much a... You could consider this cosmic horror. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's sort of got that nasty sort of body horror and like this terrible sort of unknowable thing <laughs> which i'm gonna try not to use the word thing too much it's impossible um, it yeah. really is yeah so you can see that kind of influence in the design of the creature when you see the movie as well yeah. uh but the yeah, the basic premise is they find this thing frozen and turns out it's not dead and it unfreezes defrosts mm. and starts absorbing and copying people and Gosh, then yeah. Yeah, so the whole thing with that one is that, like, now there are a lot more people in the original story. Yeah. And in the original film, it's sort of equivalent. In the original film, there's maybe, like, 20, 20 or so people. Yeah. Uh, I think it, it was it, a smart decision to reduce it down for the yeah. movie. Yeah, it feels way less tense when you're watching that original movie. Also, in the original movie, they had to change a lot of things because they couldn't do the things that John Carpenter would be able to do. Yeah. today or in the 80s <laughs> not today, <laughs> today before two years before i was born uh, <laughs> so it's very much they had it be like a it's a big frankenstein's monster man who's going around and grabbing people and then pulling them away yeah. and then is turning them into him rather than the other way okay. around he's making more versions of himself out of people yeah and it's, it's like it's, a vegetable man it's like the like, com- complete opposite of the yeah the thing the, does it's a different premise. It's sort of you can see how you can get there oh, yeah, from reading definitely. that and being like, uh, what if it did this instead? Yeah. So and it's it's a pretty cool movie. Uh you can see it like when you look at the sets in that movie, mm-hmm. you can see that in John Carpenter's the thing. You can yeah, see some definitely. of those recreated. There's some specific like oh, there's a specific hallway that is almost identical. Like <laughs> he's like put debris and all in all the exact same places and stuff, so it looks the same. It's really kind of cool if you're a big stupid nerd. <laughs> uh, but the premise is, of course, really that it absorbs people and or any living thing mm-hmm. looks just like them, and then uh oh, you don't know who's human and who's not, and you can't trust the people that you thought you knew, and it's that that a lot of the tension comes from that. Th- th- there's even a, like a question mark because it well, I, I think there is because I always just assumed that if you were the thing, yeah, you knew, you knew. it, yeah. But there was uh in the in the making of and the behind the scenes thing, mm-hmm. um, one of the actors actually even says that he felt it, it's. The, the one who plays Norris, uh-huh. um, who <laughs> when I see him, now I just think of what he becomes in the thing. <laughs> yeah, but that's he, the, that's the, that's maybe the best looking monster yeah. in movie history. But um, he was saying that he was playing it as if he didn't even know he was the thing. There, there's like a, a scene where they're in the he hallway. Wasn't sure, yeah, yeah, to know, and he kind of suspects that because they're they're kind of saying that Gary can't be in command because he's kind of going a wee bit sideways yeah he's and maybe like, losing it and he has right norse you know you, cool. yeah, yeah it's like norse you you take over and he's like i i, I, don't, I don't think i can guys and Aye. he was kind of pinpointing that moment as like the doubt of like am i me <laughs> which yeah. is an interesting premise as well it's something i never really i never took that approach mm-hmm. to it i always just assumed yeah. you get absorbed but you are now the thing you're the you're yeah an alien creature but uh that can mimic um the whoever you are but it, it's an interesting approach anyway yeah it, it adds a wrinkle to the yeah. whole thing where you're like fuck like what if what if yourself because there's a point where like kurt russell says i know i'm still human yeah and you could sort of say but do you though yeah do you exactly really know? it's <laughs> you know do you know that you're still human because you might fucking not be like how, how, how funny would it be if like i know i'm I, i'm gonna Show you what I already know, and then he puts the wire into the blood, and then oh and fuck, then, I'm actually. <laughs> yeah, uh oh, oh dear, uh, poor <laughs> bastards, they're all tied up, we're all fucked. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's yeah well established that I think this is a brilliant movie. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's I think the thing I like about it, one of the things I like about it, apart from like the special effects are are almost all just amazing. They there's still a couple stand of blips. Up. Yeah, there's, um, there's there's one or two wee moments. If you're looking, 
that you can be like, oh, there's a point where somebody's head splits open into a mouth, and that looks amazing. Yeah. But when it's eating the other guy's, it's eating another <laughs> guy's head, and the way, if you look at the way it's flailing him around, it's it hilarious. Looks a little <laughs> dap. Yes, it's it's yeah, it's hilarious. It is hilarious if you're willing to laugh at it. Then yes. Uh, and there is a small amount of there's one little moment of a uh, stop motion animation, which yeah, uh, you can spot. I think what happened there was, there was going to be a lot more of that. Yeah, wasn't there, the, but... they, they they actually did made a lot of it. Yeah, but John Carpenter, I think what John Carpenter said to the animation team was. If I can tell it's stop motion, I won't use it. Yeah. So he didn't. Thank, yeah, which is great. That's a really yeah. good. Like at least he followed through on that. There's a bit where a tentacle comes out and grabs a thing, and that's still stop motion. Yeah. And looking at it this time, I was like, that does actually look pretty goddamn good for stop motion animation. Oh yeah. But you still do so, for you just for stop motion know. in the eighties as well. Like yeah. you know, because I mean, if that was done today, you've so many. Well, it, was, it would just be done in CGI, but yeah. even if it was stop motion, you could clean it up, you could tidy things up yeah. a bit and make it look that wee bit realer. Yeah. But, um, I mean, the effects still, they're they're brilliant for, well, yeah. especially the time, but they, they still hold up. They still have that factor of, like, just that ickiness and, like, the, yeah. the, the practical things that they were using, like, real animal, like, uh, innards and stuff for the bits when they're doing autopsies and things mm. like that that just add a level of like and it, it's it looks that wee bit yeah. more real yeah there's something just weirdly like it's disgusting but there's something weirdly like gorgeous about some of like the sculpting that has been done yeah when you look at in particular when they're doing the first autopsy mm-hmm. or not the first autopsy it'd be the second one when they're cutting apart the dog thing yes yeah and he pulls open the skin and pushes it back and there's this twisted sort of sculpture inside that's yeah. just absolutely rotten and it just looks amazing. Or that split face thing, that the thing that they find yeah. frozen in the, or well, half burnt and frozen in the fire, you know, and it's just horrifically, that face is yeah. just horrifying. And of course, Norris, the Norris thing the Norris is things. just unbelievable looking it is fucking horrible <laughs> from the moment it begins to the moment it ends it's absolutely horrible it changes it's just like oh it's the part i remember for a long time it was the part i was I always feel like a pit in my stomach right before it happens yeah when the doc is trying to resuscitate him and he's using yeah. the heart paddles and that fucking we were watching when we were oh. watching it. My wife forgot about that bit, and yeah. <laughs> she was like, "Ah!" <laughs> it, it does. Horrible. Like I was kind of preparing myself, but you still uh, go, "Oh, that's yeah. disgusting." You're just like, Wait, "Is it the third time he tries this happen, or the second yeah, time?" Yeah, yeah, it's always that. It's like I know it happens. You by surprise. <laughs> yeah, it just catches you by surprise. You're like, "Oh no, no, oh!" But yeah, I, bit, I, I oh. think it's testament to how much uh, like control John Carpenter was willing to release as well <clears throat> sorry yeah. because rob botton well according to the the behind the scenes thing rob yeah. botton actually on john carpenter's commands went to the kind of uh i don't know if it was the writer or maybe like the storyboard artist or or whatever but he said go work together and like yeah. see because rob botton was coming up with all these like mental ideas and he was the yeah. one who really thought of this idea that the thing would be this really like probably more cosmic horror and like it's not yeah. just going to be like twisted things of the the things that we see him absorb like the dogs and the humans it's mm. going to be like there's gonna be like weird spider legs and yeah weird... they, they write that into the script whenever fuchs is reading from blair's notes yeah and he's saying it could have copied a thousand creatures on a thousand worlds and it could turn into any of them at any time yeah yeah. Which allowed, again, like, it's a, it's a, you know, special effect, effects artist's dream. is like, he just had free <laughs> yeah, reign. Yeah. Like, he just had to, like, show John Carpenter stuff. And John Carpenter's the type of guy that's just going to be like, yeah, do that really mental one. <laughs> can you do that? Can you do can that? You do it's that? Like, and can we slather it with KY jelly yeah. and make it really horrible looking? Yeah. yeah. And again, that that's another reason why a lot of the critics didn't like 
this and like mm -hmm. rebelled against it was that ickiness to it. it was like a lot of them just kind of seen it as like really kind of hilariously bad reviewing in the sense really? that they just see the surface level and went Ugh, that's just yeah. that's just icky <laughs> so, i guess it was there was a lot of that going on in the 80s sort of like that was the that was the sort of the era of yeah. latex yes yeah and special effects like brian yuzno was involved in a lot of movies back then who famously made society and he worked on a lot of those sort mm -hmm. of um lovecraft ish movies um like uh he worked on uh, reanimator and stuff like yes, that and yeah. he made a bunch of movies himself um he had like a lot of zombie movies had been you know happening then and we weren't into the era of people saying video nasty yet but it was just around the corner <laughs> yeah and i think maybe some critics were like especially if you're a film critic right then and you're seeing a lot of that maybe you're desensitized to that kind of stuff or maybe like you're you're like sick of that in particular so you go into a movie and you're like oh another just, one that's oh, another one of these but i find yeah. it i find it a wee bit again and i find it shocking mm. that they would because the whole start of this movie is like it's slow but purposely yeah. and it's it's just a real slow build the atmosphere is yeah. really tense already mm. It feels great. Like, the characters... Again, a lot of the critics had a go with the characters, but I thought oh. it, it they didn't need to be, like, no, really well-developed. That's not the yeah. point. And, in fact, There's it so helps There's so many it. of them. There's so yeah. many of them. Like, I mean, they get reduced as the film goes along, obviously, and less people. But it's nice sometimes to have that sort of, like, here's this one defining characteristic yeah. of this person. Uh, that we get in a quick snapshot we, we know who this is because there's like nine other guys here mm -hmm. that we have to sort of get to know and you know you don't want to get the, the one you get to know the most is mccready yeah and in fact in it, apparently in earlier stages of the script they did have mccready be more of an uh, like an every every man you know he mm. kind of he, he kind of steps up to like be the 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 hero the protagonist quite early Aye. but it kind of had to happen in a sense that, you know, you've only an hour and 40 minutes or whatever it is, and you've Kurt Russell, makes sense. To do <laughs> yeah. it. But you, also, just see, you just see that man and you go, oh, he's the hero. Yeah, but it's it's also the intention of the movie isn't, you know, it helps that you have, mm -hmm. the, the, not not that you have, like, cardboard cut out, because would, I wouldn't go that far. I don't think they're that shallow, yeah. characterization-wise. And in fact, that's a disservice to the actors who you know they met up and they worked on their characters a bit and it's like these small wee things that they have like wee mm. foibles that you know Aye. you can read into whatever you want but it's yeah. better as an audience member to not know them too well because the whole yeah. point of this movie is the thing can be any of them yeah yeah so you get like oh Nulls, he's cheeky childs he's got a temper yeah uh doc copper he's straightforward but he's got a good bedside manner blurs really introspective yeah and you like and, and as you mentioned you still have like when it can when it allows it it still yeah. gives you little character moments and that's yeah, you, all you, you really yeah. need you get to know child and mccready yeah. as it goes along and then whenever people turn on each other you learn more stuff about people mm -hmm. where it's like like when they start to not trust each other and they're doing back and forth like oh yeah. no no but 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 no uh, uh you're being you're like this uh what What's that all about? And like know? even like, like Clark, the dog handler, he yeah. is so suspect from the first mm. go, especially he's the one that's been around the thing dog the yeah. most. And he just acts kind of weird. But it's almost like you find out later he gets killed and mm. he was human the whole time. Yeah. He's just like that. Yeah. He's that's just the kind of guy he is. And, and, and in yeah. fact, in the behind the scenes things, when when uh, Richard Mosser, the, the, the actor who plays mm. Clark, talking about his character he wanted to go for that one because uh because i think he had a choice between two of them or two or three of them and he said john carpenter he liked the idea of playing this like loner guy who is more kind of connected with the, the animals more connected with the dogs so as soon as they all get murdered he mm -hmm. just shuts down and he just suspects everyone 
and yeah. it's great because yeah you, you instantly i mean especially like these days where you've got games like among us and you've got like that hit the button that's on that uh yeah there's so much there's so many things now we're with within and those things you know yeah. that that, that you this, i think people yeah. can understand this movie a bit more yeah. now where it's like oh he's acting sus is now like a proper like to yeah, know like, is oh, a phrase what are you doing that for? <laughs> yeah and yeah, it's really it's... interesting when when you go into this like when you've already seen this movie and you know who who is the thing or who's possibly the thing yeah. before they actually reveal themselves and you're like most of the time they don't they're not antagonistic or they're not like kind of going oh i think he's the thing and they're not the ones pointing the finger and stuff they're in the background like going oh fuck i don't know what to do they're trying to yeah. blend in by being like i uh, like Oh, guys, I think we should all just calm down. Yeah, yeah. Or, let's just wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's all split up into groups. And <laughs> yeah. you, right, you two go together over there, and me and you will go over here. <laughs> yeah, that's shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, um, no, I, I really like it. Like, I, th- I think that's the... I think that that's the thing that is maybe understood more these days, is, like, this is much more even though it has all this gore and all you know yeah the, so much special effects there's so much psychological horror in this of mm-hmm. and and then like the deeper meanings you could read into that like to you know yeah your friends aren't who they say they are and all this mm-hmm. kind yeah. of crap but uh it's so well done and the at like the atmosphere is perfect from the get-go because it, it has those big open shots and like you have yeah. this massive area but you're still so isolated you're actually even yeah. more isolated than if it was just a small room yeah you know it, it, it's like it, it's like in space movies when they're done right you know mm-hmm. you've this endless nothing that's what it's yeah. like you know yeah that almost makes it worse you're trapped with this yeah thing. it's a movie all about being alone in a group yeah it's just like all your friends are there but you're alone mm-hmm really because you don't know anybody could be not who they say they are and you've nowhere to run yeah you go outside for too long and you'll freeze to death you know you yeah your options are shite yeah. especially and at the point where it's like we don't have any transport yeah. so we are extra fucked so we have to deal with this now yeah and we don't know how to do that and the whole film is them figuring that out and in, in the best scene in cinema history <laughs> which is the testing the blood scene yeah, which is maybe also my favorite scene in any episode of south park <laughs> yeah. when they do the exact bit where they're tra- i think it's the head lice episode they're trying to figure out who has head lice yeah. and like cartman says he has a test <laughs> and they're doing the exact <laughs> blood test from the thing and kyle just gets an over them and goes this is you just saw this in the thing and it's pretty oh it's fucking great. yeah i mean it's been done and so much. i mean it was done in the va- the faculty when we yeah we looked it's at exactly that the same way scene. back when yeah. you know, it's... people tied to a sofa <laughs> yeah. while people stand in front of them and go do the test yeah i, I love gary when once he gets all clear okay i know you've, you've all been through a lot guys but <laughs> yeah, can, the last can i get off goes... this fucking sofa <laughs> Yeah, he's like, I'd like, I'd like to, I'd like to not spend the rest of this winter <laughs> tied to this fucking couch. It's, uh, a, yeah. br- it's a brilliant line read. <laughs> it's a fucking class. Yeah, he's so good. He's so mad and tired. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they do a really good job with that as well. They do a really good job of just like everybody seeming fucking exhausted. Yeah. Towards the end of the film, especially, they're just like, no one can be fucked anymore and they're all just resigned to their fates yeah almost and it's brilliant and it's just and you can't oh like there's just so much in this movie i could just say i love this and i love that i think everyone's performances are brilliant i love this i think the script is great yeah uh it's really fucking well shot it is beautifully shot at times those external those exterior scenes especially are just like that whole that the way it opens yeah. is just like you were saying just the the dog running across the snow and the helicopter yeah. after and the music we have to talk about yeah. ennio Maricone's score even though we movie. got a razzie award for it apparently <laughs> that's fuck? fucking re- they should be ashamed of themselves yeah. for that that is disgusting the yeah. fucking score of this movie is pitch perfect that's so scary and that's yeah. all of these 
And the, in fact, yeah. if, if even when you stick on the the prequel one from the very mm. start, like the, I think there's more music in the first like ten minutes of that movie than there is in the entirety of, of the, the thing, original yeah. the thing. Or well, sorry, yeah, John Carpenter's the music. The thing. Yeah, John Carpenter's the thing. The music is at the beginning. Yeah, and then you get a little bit of it. There's a, a panning shot in the middle when the camera's moving through mm-hmm. the station and you're like, oh, what's this? And it's like sort of following the dog around. There's a wee bit of music there. Yeah. And then every now and then there'll be like a stinger. Yeah. There's this, hor- yeah. There's this horrible cacophonous stinger <laughs> that's like somebody falling face first on an organ for a few seconds. <laughs> that, that's uh, just an original synth music. That's just... There's <laughs> just there, there could have been just John Carpenter falling asleep on his keyboard and they'd be like, oh, was that? That was brilliant. Um... And then back at the end, the music kicks in again. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of music in between. Yeah. When things are happening, it's all in-scene sound and screaming and horrible. Because there's so much horrible noise (laughs) that... The music would just get in the way. (laughs) Yeah, putting music on it would just get in the way. There's like, anytime it's doing the old... Noises and stuff like that. You know, that's what's scary. You don't need music. Yeah. You know, and it's it just it speaks for itself. I just said, like it, it, again, that that opening is so so perfect in a way for for the movie because everything feels off from the get go. And like your first time watching it, you're not sh- like, yeah. why are they chasing and trying to kill this dog? And you're instantly yeah. on the dog side because, of course, you are because it's a you're like, Fuck lovely these guys. dog, yeah, and you're yeah. and. The dog seems to go to these people to get protected. Yeah, but the dog is super nice. Yeah, and you're like, oh, what a lovely, what a good boy. And then, <laughs> as it even as it progresses, you know, you have this, the dogs just kind of acting a bit odd, and you're like, what yeah. the fuck's going on? That, that again, that that, that shot dog's a class actor. You, <laughs> yeah, that shot, that one bit where you're seeing the dog wander around and the cameras moving yeah. around with it, and like it, the way it like it stops and will like look, yeah, over to one side. And like look around, like it's checking the coast is clear, kind of thing. It's just like I don't know how they got the fucking dog to do that, but they did. Yeah. That was a really well trained husky. Yep. And that's just so creepy. And and, and it has this whole. Uh, I, I can't remember if I read it or if if he might have said it in the behind the scenes uh, uh, documentary, but mm-hmm. John Carpenter said that uh, the movie and then there were none inspired mm-hmm. him quite a lot, and I you, you can see it see in that first half. Before yeah. everything starts getting more kind of sci-fi, um, mm. and 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 into the special effects, there there's so much tension and there's so much like it's like a who done it, um, yeah. because and then they were none is a movie that was based on uh, an Agatha Christie novel that's now called Ten Little Indians. I'll not tell you what it used to be called, mm, um, nice. but uh, you know, and and in, in that movie and and the book. You don't know who the killer like people just keep getting picked off and you don't know who it is out of these like ten or twelve people that are in this mansion. Mm. Um until like the last I, I think seven minutes or something, it then gets right. revealed. But um it has the same kind of vibes to, to Like the M. Thing. Night Shyamalan's devil, John, would you say? Right, so that's us done then. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Uh, well, pack it up, lads, it's over. <laughs> you should be disgusted with yourself. You brought M. Night Shyamalan into this discussion about the thing. Oh, uh, uh, corrupted the pure. Oh, <laughs> uh, I couldn't help it. It's just as soon as you were talking about, and then there were none. It was like, oh, yeah, it's a rip off. Devil's a rip off. <laughs> yeah, too, but yeah. in the worst way, the twist in that movie is disgustingly bad. <laughs> Uh, it's a person you it's the person it couldn't have been yeah yay but you knew it was from the start anyway because <laughs> anyway sorry about that yeah yeah so yeah it's 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 just a great if if you can watch it it's hard to do if you've seen something before but if you can watch it with a sort of a mindset of this the what if what if yeah what if i didn't know mm-hmm. it's just like way more tense and frightening which, as we mentioned earlier, is very hard because, like, as soon as you've kind of seen it even once, I, I think, mm-hmm. I, I don't know, we mentioned Norris. Norris is so recognizable as that horrible creature thing oh, yeah. that when you it's, see him, you're just like, burned going, into my brain. Dude, like, you're going to be a horrible, horrible, yeah. severed head yeah, monster. Yeah, I think I've, I think I mentioned before on this show that, like, I saw that scene mm-hmm. uh, uh, whenever I was quite young. There was a special, there was a show on TV about special effects. Yeah. 
and they showed the scene. I was probably about eight, maybe. Mm-hmm. And they showed that scene, the, the, the part where his head, his neck stretches. Yeah. And breaks and comes off. And then it sort of uses its tongue to pull itself <laughs> across the floor. And it's absolutely bogging. <laughs> I saw that. When I was quite young, I hadn't seen the thing yet. Yeah. And that was burned into my head forever. That was a thing in our house. Mm -hmm. People, to scare me, (laughs) people would just shout stretchy head, (laughs) which is what we knew that as. That was the short, the short term, the short (laughs) form for that thing was, oh, that's what Kevin's scared of, stretchy head. So they would just shout stretchy head and I would freak out and get very mad. (laughs) And then I remember whenever I saw the thing later when I was like, I don't know, like 15 or whatever, yeah. like being like absorbed by this movie and then seeing that in the middle of it and be like, oh my God, it's this, <laughs> you know, oh my God, it's this thing that traumatized me. I've been me locked in an asylum ever since. And here I am, I'm still subjecting myself <laughs> stretchy to stretchy head. To fucking stretchy head, I. <laughs> so Norris to me is always going to be stretchy head, yeah. which is a terrible name. It's a good name. I think it, that's a good name for a monster. <laughs> In, like, uh, a silly, like, film where somebody says it, and then you think, oh, that's stupid. But then somebody says it later, and you're like, oh, that's scary now. But somebody said stretchy head. Like, the crooked man. You know? But, nah, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'll maybe take it's your just, word for it. Yeah, so that freaked me out. But, yeah, uh, this is definitely my favorite film. Yeah. Uh, I, am, I am even more sure of that. Since I watched it, <laughs> we, we actually the, the, Again. there's one character we we didn't even mention, which mm. that should get his his place in the sun as well. Of Doctor Blair, oh Blair, Wilford Blair's Brimley just... is fucking great Wilford this. fucking Brimley, star of Cocoon and the Werther's original ads, <laughs> and probably a bunch of other stuff that Americans are know about. But he's kind of like the uh, unsung hero as well because yeah. he's the one who destroys any chance they have yeah. of escaping, which yep. it's the smart thing to do. <laughs> Yeah, again, it seems villainous at the beginning yeah. when he does it. You're like, this guy's gone mad. But he's just like, and, he, and he, the, he's shouting about it while he's doing it. Yeah. He's explaining what he's doing. But because at that point in the movie, you don't really understand necessarily yet. Yeah. And the other characters definitely don't understand yet. He is doing the right thing, and he's explaining himself while he's doing it, while he's taking an axe to the computer, to the radio unit, and all that stuff, and wrecking everything. And he's trashed the helicopter and the tractor, and yeah. he's like, "I don't trust any of you." And yeah, and he's like, "No, what does he say? No dog makes it a thousand miles to the coast." Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, br- like, it's yeah, a brilliant. He wants to be us. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a brilliant moment of just yeah they're just that like confusion and it, it kind of sets yeah. the it sets in motion right. everything after it's it's yeah. very it's, very it's exposition that you understand 15 minutes later yes you look back done go, right oh, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah we should mention because right. a lot of movies do that but it's so yeah. bad yeah yeah so you go ah now i understand why he was shouting those things yeah. and why he was going mad and shooting at his friends he didn't just go crazy and it's it's interesting whenever he gets thinged, and yeah, right. you're kind of wondering that last time when he happen. was like yeah. trying to convince McCready to let him back Don't in, him was out. he already a yeah. thing then? Was he? Yeah. He was. He was exactly. very. He was very efficient, by the way. Mm. See how much he did when he was locked in there. Oh, I, he got shit done. Like, <laughs> yeah, fuck but a big I mean, time. you could probably really be good if you could like turn your fingers into like multiple other fingers. Yeah. You know, and stuff like that. You could probably work quite quickly building <laughs> a, so. a silly little ship. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Hey, don't ask me. I'm not in a ship shifting <laughs> alien. Um, so, yes, John, my review of this movie is that this movie is fucking brilliant and I love it. It is. And it has a few very minor flaws that almost don't matter. And they're what, like, it's, it's like nothing really. Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, and, and it's all just like, this special effect, this small special effect, didn't quite work. Yeah, maybe, but even then, you can ignore it very easily. I think, and the story's great, the characters are great, the acting is superb, and it's pitch perfect. It's spot on. Everybody's really well cast. Yeah, you know they are all great. Like Child Keith David as Childs is just like 
man, he's such a belligerent dick. <laughs> but at the same time, everybody's behavior is completely understandable. You understand? He's, he's got a really good reason to be a belligerent oh, yeah. dick. Like it, it's just that you're behind Kurt Russell at that stage, <laughs> yeah. so you're like, oh, he's being a bad guy. We're like, he's not really. Yeah, you know, it, 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 he is very justified, and then in fact, it's one of those things of like, in that situation. You might yeah. act like that without without yeah. kind of wanting to admit it. The you know, it's always easy to go. Oh, I would be I'd be Kurt Russell All if right. I was in this situation. But no, you wouldn't. Uh. No, you'd, you'd be you'd be Blair. You'd be fucking. <laughs> I'd be fucking. I'd be fucking Fuchs, like going <laughs> running around in the dark, going fuck, fuck, fuck. fuck Actually, fuck. I think I'd be Clark. I'd be the dog handler. <laughs> I'd just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not. I'm not going to talk to anyone. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I've I've grown a huge beard, and I'm going. I'm growing a huge beard and I wear my big puffy coat and I sit here and I play with the dogs yep. and I try to just get by. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fuck. But uh, right. what do you think of the... Uh, th- th- this is actually opened on the same day as Blade Runner, which infamously wow. did not do well in the box office yeah. also. Both of those films tanked. Nin- 1982? Really well what the fuck? Were, were mm. you stupid or something? <laughs> because know. you know what? Well, you know what did well in 1982? Oh no. ET. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can go back to our solo alien invasion <laughs> episode if you want to hear our thoughts on ET. It's shite. Uh, <laughs> there's my. Okay, there's, there you go. There's the, there's the edited down version. No, John, they have to go and listen oh, to yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Uh, or Spoilers. They're shite. It's shite, or is it? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, find out yeah. next week, or no, wait, no find out find lots out of like weeks 30 ago. 30 weeks ago, <laughs> whenever that was. Oh my god, that's so long. Yeah, forty nine <laughs> weeks. Yeah, For, uh, my maybe. gosh. Yeah, there my you go. Gosh, John, it's wild. Yeah. So, well, well, Blade Runner wasn't the same movie that Blade Runner would become. I think when it hit the cinema. So, yeah, kind of understandable. Uh, the thing, I mean, there's a lot of films. This has happened to. This happened to Evil Dead as well, yeah. where like Evil Dead tanked, but then it came out in VHS and slowly but surely became this sleeper hit that. Yeah became a cult classic and the thing did exactly the same thing you know it came out on vhs Mm -hmm. and whatever else betamax as well it turns out because we (laughs) yeah we did do a little look before here just to see and yes it came out in betamax too um and yeah people were it's the kind of thing that like you see it in the store and you go what the fuck's that and you watch Mm -hmm. it and you go here you show your mates and you go here check this out this is nuts yeah. <laughs> look at how wild this movie is and like it's passed around and passed around and they go people are just like oh, i'm gonna buy that you it, know and then because i, I yeah. think it does such a good job of like having that balance of like yeah it's got all the the gory like over the top mm-hmm. nonsense that you look yeah. for when you're a teen and it, yep. it's all done amazingly well it's all great yep but i mean i still love this movie today because mm-hmm. You can get into the the atmosphere of it now, the paranoia, yeah. the yeah. everything about the start of it is like a murder mystery, as we mentioned. Yeah. It's just the way it unfolds and the pacing of it's just incredible. And that yeah. ending, that oh fucking ending. Oh my god, what a perfect way to end the movie great. about paranoia. Yeah. Oh and, my god. And they might they they were they, they actually record that they had uh, a happy ending film for it in which uh kurt russell makes it um mm. and they t- they're shown tests in his blood and he's fine and Ugh. because it, it wasn't going to test well with audiences but uh, mm. i think carpenter kind of fought to keep the the more nihilistic ending as they called Indeed. it Indeed, mm. but <laughs> you can see why because it makes so much more sense and it, it fits yeah. as, as i'm led to believe in the book they do kill the thing but then yeah. they're it's left with them looking at birds worried that the mm. birds might be the thing and yeah. bring it out of the uh out, out of the yeah. isolated environment yeah birds birds can get to the coast yep <laughs> yeah quite yeah. easily yeah but yeah, yeah that, that like just that scene of Childs and mccready just sitting looking at each other not sure mm. if either of them yeah it's so so cinematic as well like yeah the- the, the camp's on fire in the background <laughs> yeah. and they got this bottle of whiskey that they're passing back and forth and they're just like well and it's like and that, the her- heroic sacrifice thing as well like yeah. you know it's got that elements of that in it even mm-hmm. though 
would you think about it if they freeze to death and they're discovered then the mm. thing wins <laughs> so <laughs> which was sort of the plot of the thing video game Have oh you ever played that i i only played a, no i only seen you play a bit of it i think yeah, it I wasn't never... great, but it was all right, and it was good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was good enough for me to be like, oh, they've really kind of nailed the atmosphere in this. They do nail the atmosphere yeah. in it very well, but they have to make it make it a video game. So there's just there is a sort of a, an annoying frequency of little things to shoot, yeah, you know, and stuff like that. That's maybe not great. Uh, that if they were doing it today, you'd have a very different kind of horror game. Whereas back then, yeah, horror games were like. You're shooting things that are scary. Yeah. It has Whereas to. It now, had to fit that mold. Where yeah, like in this day and age, where alien isolation and and things like yeah. that have kind of bucked the yeah. trend and made it a bit more. Yeah, you could make a really great the thing <sighs> video game now, but they probably won't. No, but you never know. That would be super cool. Uh, there was also a series of comic books I have a few issues of mm-hmm. uh, that are very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're gruesome. Yeah much like the film itself uh or nasty like you just get comic book artists going hog wild on like well this person's going to be ripped apart in the worst possible way here i go uh so some of that's that's very good i have actually one framed hanging in my hallway yes (laughs) um yeah it's it's very good um and uh then of course we had the prequel Mm -hmm. that got made which i don't have anything against and i'm fine with it existing because it wasn't offensive it doesn't interfere with anything and it's not a remake yeah you know it, it's it's annoying just, thing about it is that they just called it the thing yeah. which is stupid what annoys me but, though about that stuff is that yeah. it also it's i don't know something irks me about them trying to like you know that the, the scenes mm-hmm. where they're walking about in that facility in yeah. john carpenter's thing you know they're having to like go oh well this has to happen so this looks like this by the time they get there and yeah the original it's a, in, it just yeah, feels paint by numbers yeah it just feels like to me it's just i i kind of yeah. prefer that just not knowing just yeah kind of be, that being left to your imagination and i wish yeah. they would stop making these prequels mm-hmm. and i mean we mentioned kind of some of this kind of stuff when we did our nostalgia episode um yeah. a few weeks back it's so go watch that one yeah let's plug all the other ones yeah um, <laughs> go listen to our nostalgia nonsense go. you know um we're it it doesn't add much it as you say yeah. it is kind of inoffensive but that's almost offensive to me <laughs> yeah they're just like right so there was an axe here so we yeah. have to get this axe into this wall and there's a hole in this wall and there's this guy's dead in this chair so and it's and, and it, this, this, even and the fact that they have this american woman who's involved that was never mentioned and yeah. like you know it's kind of it a lot of it feels very forced in uh, a sense that like uh, they slip in two americans into yeah it. actually yeah, yeah the two of them. and that's it's kind of like, like right i thought this was a norwegian, norwegian expedition like do, yeah. do they have no no norwegian was was she a paleontologist or something I don't remember. <laughs> Scientist. There we go. I own it. I own it on Blu-ray, but I only own it because the only way I could get a Blu-ray of the original John Carpenter's <laughs> The Thing was in a double pack with this newer one. That's fair which I don't then. mind. I think it 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 stays true to the visceral yeah. um sort of visual stuff mm-hmm. of the thing. There is some really nasty stuff happening in it that I kind of go... There's one particular bit where some people are on a helicopter that's about to leave and a guy's sort of head starts to like yeah. split open that looks really nasty that I really love. <laughs> but then there's a couple of bits later that you're just like, that's CG? Yeah. And I can see that it's CG. Much like John Carpenter was probably like, if I can say that it's, you know, stop motion, I'm not going to use yeah. it. They, it's the kind of thing that like oh well if John Carpenter if this was back then and John Carpenter made that same assertion he wouldn't use this particular footage yeah, that they're exactly. using here he would have made a big he would have, he would have got somebody to make a big horrible puppet instead <laughs> yeah and probably spend a lot more money but you know ultimately be more worthwhile for me the viewer yeah. uh, which I really appreciate so yeah this uh, film is great the prequel was unnecessary but not offensive um i think it's a better movie than the original the thing from the outer space from outer mm-hmm. space 
because it's it's still very rah rah 50s america <laughs> prevails aha um they have some clumsy sort of stuff like that and they have like like the end of that movie is them talking on a radio about how everything's fine now yeah you know like saying hello mission control don't worry we solved the problem blah blah blah, blah. And making like a proclamation to the sky <laughs> like they make in all 50 sci-fi movies uh, you know but who knows what else is out there sort of thing like that <laughs> i can't remember exactly what it is because i haven't seen it in yeah. a while but it's very the end of it is that and there's like there's like like 15 people all standing around the radio <laughs> like looking like yeah we triumphed and you're like mm, and like especially if you've all, if you've seen the john carpenter one first which i had mm. you're like nah let's <laughs> now nah, i know how this is supposed to end i know what the i know what the i know what the correct ending yeah. is for this and it's not that many it's two guys maybe just one guy who knows yeah. who knows what's going on there Ooh. Ooh. and it's fucking brilliant so john you were saying earlier about reviews yes um from, so, from the time yeah so hold on just a wee second while so so vincent canby Ooh. from the new york times oh he uh owners of wordle <laughs> yes <laughs> anyway um said one of the film's major problems is that mm. the creature has no identifiable shape of its own <laughs> it's, the wait, wait 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 <laughs> it gets better All it's, right, okay. it's, or no sorry oh that is the quote the the, the other bit was editorialized where it says it's almost as if the alien monster is a shapeshifter to like that's the whole point <laughs> You know, it was that you? That's that's John's yeah. thought for the day. Yeah, yeah John, you're you right. Know, it's almost as if it's a chameleonic life form from outer yeah. space. Oh my it, god! John? It's almost like the whole point is that it you don't it doesn't have a shape oh of its own, and that god. it could be anyone, and that's the whole fucking point of the oh, fucking movie, you idiot. That is oh, like that bumbling. one. That one had me in wrinkles because I was that's, like, I can't wait to tell Kevin this. That's something else. Yeah. Like that is in. Oh, it's, uh, you don't know who the thing is. <laughs> Yes. Oh, it's, it's rubbish. I, you don't know what. Oh, that's like what, I don't know. this murder mystery oh. shake because it doesn't tell you the murder is at the start. <laughs> it's not like an episode of Columbo yeah, where you know at the beginning, like you know. <laughs> the Columbo fan there, I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, oh. Yeah, he said it qualifies as instant junk, which is just wow. ridiculous. Like it's pr- like pretty like rough reviews as well, yeah. which is is kind of shocking like it's wild i can see it not mm. being someone's kind of you know oh, absolutely bag, like them kind of going like, oh it's not yeah, really my, my thing. wife does not like this film <laughs> no <laughs> oh she does not like looking at this film no I, I, understandable everything's a bit too uh, moist <laughs> yeah i think i think she's just not a john carpenter it's like halloween yeah but uh this film she's just like oh the thing and i'm just like it's the best movie ever stop it <laughs> <laughs> that must be torture um, to live with a reviewer for the Sh- chicago reader says the the uh-huh. terse banality of the dialogue makes them all seem uh, makes them all sound and seem alike it's hard to tell who's being attacked and hard to care what? <laughs> yeah. that's I think maybe that guy was tired when he went to the cinema. Yeah, I think, I, think, or he, I think maybe he fell asleep in the middle and then he still had to turn his, his review the next day and he's like, oh, uh, uh, oh, I didn't know what was happening because who's what? Huh? <laughs> Jesus. Um, Everyone's really well defined. I don't understand that. And yeah, I exactly. Don't know. I, I can see people, I, I could see the argument for like saying that they're. Uh, they could have been deeper or whatever to know blah 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 there's not enough character mm. development but again i would yeah. argue that the whole point of the movie is that they're like i think it's an i, yeah. I think it's a a good choice as well that they didn't yeah. because you need these characters to almost be not interchangeable but yeah to have they have that. to be a mystery to the audience yeah. in a way because you don't know if somebody's acting strangely yeah and I don't feel yeah. like I'm an apologist for the movie saying that. Like I think no. that is the core That's of the, the movie, the core message <laughs> yeah. as well. Like, the, yeah. Um, but uh, what else did that guy say? Um, yeah, before the credits roll, they had the bail saying the suicidal attitude adopted towards the end undercuts Kurt Russell's status as a center screen force, which oh. again <laughs> is just. He's an action hero. He should blow everything <laughs> up and win. Yeah, I think uh, he he would probably love the ending of the fifties one, where you look up into the sky and go, uh, "America's like, ah, great. We have won the day yet again, America." Yeah. Ha-ha. 
The yeah. communist threat yeah. of the thing is away. <laughs> he wants it. Weirdly, so one guy was like, it's too simple. And this guy's like, it's not simple enough. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. That's <laughs> fun. Like, uh, I think what you find is that a, a lot of them really didn't like the 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 nihilistic, as, as a lot of them called it, mm. the nihilistic ending. Which, right. you know, it, it may be a taste thing, but I kind of mm. prefer things like that that aren't like clear is cuts it a, and is it a taste thing or a societal thing maybe, maybe like yeah. you know there was a there was there was economic turmoil <laughs> a lot in the in the early 80s and the mid 80s all through the 80s actually would also so, explain why et did very well in the same yeah. year it's like okay yay happy alien yay yeah, i think maybe that's it maybe like et's the film maybe that society needed yeah. but the thing was the film they deserved <laughs> <laughs> you know okay batman yeah, exactly. Yeah, see, right. And Blade Runner that, was just caught up in the. <laughs> and Blade Runner was like, got, Blade Runner got dissected by the studio because they were like, "Oh, we don't know what they need or what, <laughs> yeah. so we're gonna cut it to ribbons and make it a noir shoot the shooty robot story." Yeah, we don't and then, know. Oops. We haven't seen anything like this before. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to talk about souls right now. Everybody's fucking <laughs> depressed. No, I, does this robot have a soul? I don't know. Does, is there bullets in his gun? That's all anybody wants to know. <laughs> Let's just do that. Oh, yeah. But hey, yeah. Anyway, Blade Runner is also yeah. great. A great film. Uh, E.T. is not a great film. No. <laughs> uh, go, wa- go watch E.T.'s, our third E.T.'s episode. Well, <laughs> E.T.'s well made. Uh, but, you know, Steven Spielberg knows how to make a film. But, you know. Fuck E.T. I hate E.T. <laughs> I hope E.T. gets eaten by the thing. Yeah. I mean, the thing is the complete antithesis of E.T. <laughs> yeah, like, I think... Yeah, it, it is interesting to see, like, because that that is the the contrast in tone between those two movies, and the contrast in tone between the reviews of those yeah. movies is huge. Oh yeah, is exactly it's it's an identical contrast in tone, <laughs> negative and positive. Yeah, so I don't agree with anything any of those reviewers no. say at all. They're entitled to their opinions, of course. Some of them are factually inaccurate, though. Yeah. I mean, it feels like a little bit. I I would agree with you. Um, I yeah which is it's it's hard to it's hard to forgive that kind of thing but again context <laughs> you know I, th- I think it's always important to to go in and, and and realize there's an intention with every movie yeah and i think that's what a lot of them miss is the intention of this movie isn't a character study and you know no. that recent joker movie you know i i i really liked it and I think it did very well because the intention of it was a character study. I know it was very upfront yeah. about that, that. That's what it was and about. Okay, no if one you've went seen... in expecting Batman. Yeah, exactly. Terms. Like, Do you know, and if you've seen King of Comedy, okay, yes, it does yeah. rip that movie off a hell of a lot, and that's a fantastic yeah. movie. But I think it did it well enough. It kind of it had does a, it in a, such an updated. annoying way. It does it in such a knowing way because they literally put Robert De Niro in. Yeah, the movie. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's but um, and like any of the negative review, reviews I've seen of that have been that just it almost seems like it, it was, you know, people wanted to show off that. Uh, I've seen King of Comedy though, and it's like it's just doing that. Uh, it's like yeah, there's enough yeah. in it to be different. But yeah, I do see some similarities though. I mean, people did say there were some reviews of that that were negative because of again the nihilism. Yeah. I, I'm like that review's ac- accurate. Oh, yeah. This the movie is very nihilistic. Yeah. Uh, for the thing, but I don't think it means it's a bad movie as well. You know, absolutely I, not. It's just not that person's cup yeah. of tea. But you it's know, definitely all mine. reviews are. <laughs> yeah, all reviews are subjective. I seem to love these apparently. nihilistic movies. I think this is yeah. kind of saying a lot about me, unfortunately. Yeah, and there were no child actors in it, so it's yeah. getting a double thumbs up from John Ferris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good move. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I still can't believe that first review. Of and, being like, I've still got no shape. That's just wild. And I, I think the female characters were a lot more, a lot, lot better defined than they are in Michael Mann's movies. <laughs> By not existing at all. Ah, uh, there's one. There's the the chess voiceover voiceover lady. Oh, Adrian Barbeau yeah. doing the voice of the. Well, it's a weird cameo yeah, but... for her. Be just like she has like what is it? She just is like rook to. Like knight is a king to yeah. na- rook four checkmate checkmate, <laughs> and then he loses it. the plot and wrecks the computer. Yeah, it's, he just pours his whiskey <laughs> into the inside of it and walks off and off, which I think is a really good way to establish his character yeah. as well. That's a good. That's the first time you see yeah. him, and that's what he does. And you're like, okay, I get this guy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, again, so well-defined characters, they don't have to be deep or super well-developed because they don't need no. to be. It's you know, better it's if just, they're not. It's better. Yeah, the, 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 the way this film is structured and the theme of the movie is such that it works better if you're not delving deep into this person's backstory or the way they think. Yeah. You know, it's like, and the whole movie takes place over like, I don't know, it's a couple of hours. Yeah. Really? That everything happens in and like, you know, it, it, the way the way you see people fall apart, you get enough mm-hmm. from that to know their characters. So um, I think we already knew going into this <laughs> uh, that I was going to be effusively praiseworthy of this movie. Yes. And John, John, of course, agrees that you do agree that it is a very oh, good I, film. Oh, I love this movie. Yeah, I mean, this is it is, one, brilliant. It, it is one of my favorite movies. Like it's, yeah. it always has been. And yeah, it's it's up there. Like I mean, it's up there with Alien as yeah. just like a sci-fi masterpiece. And like a lot of my favorite movies tend to be in that sort of yeah, oeuvre. yeah definitely. You know, they tend to be at least slightly science fictiony mm-hmm. and horror based. Like, you have like the thing, Alien, Ghostbusters, yeah. the first Ghostbusters is sort of, it's horror themed yeah. and it has some scary stuff in it and is sci fi ish as well. Oh, very much uh, so. Weirdly, Ghostbusters has got like the proton packs and all like, the idea of catching ghosts in a big <laughs> machine and all that nonsense. It's very cool. And it's also kind of got that cosmic horror thing going on in Ghostbusters that you get. Yeah. In a lot of these other films, um, that they kind of spent their capital on, and all the sequels, uh, where they just basically didn't go that direction with it mm-hmm. after Ghostbusters. Uh, but they, they're not here to talk about <laughs> Ghostbusters. We could do another cosmic horror episode. Actually, that would be actually great. We could talk about Ghostbusters True. or not. I think. I think we would find a way to <laughs> lever that in there. That'd be clever. Uh, yeah. So uh, the thing, probably my favorite movie ever made uh john what do you have a favorite favorite movie I, do you think that was network your favorite um no well not because we did a whole episode yeah. on my favorite movie and that <laughs> no, feels I'm, I'm a kind little of, selfish I, I think i'm a wee bit like no it changes all the time it depends what mood i'm in yeah. and because some that seems like more sensible to me <laughs> I'm not as two dimensional as you, Kevin. Yeah, that's like whenever people ask me something like, "What's your favorite song? What's your favorite yeah. band?" and I'm always like, ah. "I don't know." Yeah, like I, I, I have a few that are kind of always up there and always ones that I, mm. you know, like Fisher King by, uh, 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 why, Steve. why is my mind <laughs> blanking on on the director of Terry Gilliam? There we go. There you go. <laughs> this happens way too often with me. My mind just like kind of shuts down and goes, "No, I'm not giving you that information." <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you have to sleep for three hours before yeah. I let you know. Uh, you've, this particular you've got bit. the internet, don't you? Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to bed. Fuck you. Use your phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think technology's for? Um, yeah, yeah. like I, I love that movie. That movie has a, a very special place in my heart. Is like kind of mm. something that maybe a lot of people wouldn't consider their favorite movie but uh yeah. definitely networks in there 12 angry men mm-hmm. like a lot of <laughs> sydney lament movies though I, yeah. I have certain directors that i always seem to kind of uh, aim for and i go i really like his output i i find mm-hmm. but um no i don't i don't think i've got I mean, I have a solid top five that i decided on years <laughs> ago and has been unwavering since weirdly yeah. it's just basically just like uh the blues brothers uh blues brothers the odd couple oh brilliant movie. ghostbusters ghostbusters alien and the thing yeah that's that's been my top five for a long time all great movies i would i, yeah. I would definitely say yeah they all deserve to be very high up yeah uh i think that i think they're all fantastic and actually all uh, from knowing you for many years all of them mm-hmm. yeah they kind of make sense that they would be there's like <laughs> great comedies in there and and yeah. then disturbing horrors exactly Absolutely. like yeah, you the top, the top two are extremely disturbing <laughs> yeah. horror movies that are just absolutely just nail biting fucking sweat boxes to watch yeah. um yeah so that's me and this this also brings us to the, the well i mean we've only watched one movie today yeah but what is the solution uh to sit wait and die <laughs> it's the yeah, solution well, I mean, for everything we do have we've got an ample supply of whiskey here um that's great that's all you need uh we'll just i mean <laughs> to steal a great 
line. Why don't we just sit here for a while and see what happens? Tum-tum. 